Hey, it's Jeff. Gonna do some more calculation training on chess tempo. Last time we left off, we accidentally started a new puzzle. I didn't really look at it, but we had to abandon it, and I can't do any even unrated training without getting this problem out the way, so it's about time for me to make this new video and for us to give this problem a shot. So let me get my timer. Alright, so 10 minutes thinking and we'll see what we can do. And so we did, we had just gave a check with knight f6, king moved to h8. Let's look at the material first. Um, okay, I can already see that there's an imbalance because they have two rooks, we don't have a rook. So let's see. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, versus 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, um, so they're up two pawns, which is very important to know because if you found a tactic that just won one pawn, which usually isn't the right answer, or just won a piece, it might still not be the answer because if we want a piece now, we'd only be, um, I forgot which side is down two pawns. I think we're down two pawns. So if we want a piece, then we're only up one pawn, which again is not really enough to win. So that leads me to think maybe there's like a checkmate or winning more material. And I'm, I'm, I'm unsure if even winning an exchange would be uh, would be good enough here. But anyway, to the position. Um, candidate moves. We don't have any checks. So let's look for captures and threats. So there's knight takes d5, bishop takes d5. Queen takes d5 is a capture. Uh, queen takes f5 is a capture. And that's it for captures and for threats. Would be harder to find. Any any knight move would be a discovery on the rook on e7. And c4 is a threat on the knight. And maybe queen h3 would eventually threaten something, but probably not. And after that, it's becoming much more unlikely that any moves are doing anything. So queen takes f5, we can eliminate immediately. Queen takes d5, we can eliminate immediately. Um, so two of the ideas, well, knight takes d5 would be a capture and also threaten the rook on e7. So they can try to recapture the knight and then we can take on e7 but then this gets into the discussion of is winning an exchange enough because we would be winning five versus their um and they would be wait so knight takes d5 let's say pawn takes then um okay yeah bishop takes e7 queen takes e7 we gave up three pawns for five pawns basically and so that, that difference of two that we won ends up being an equal position in a way, well, material-wise. That might not be the case for this particular situation, but since we started um, without having a rook and basically down two points, if we win two points, it might not be the answer. And that might be why people would get this wrong, because they see that they can win the rook. So we'll try to find something better, but... If nothing else is better, then I guess knight takes d5 is what we'll do. Hmm. I wonder if knight takes h7 does anything. Um, like get the queen active. Because they can't take with the rook because they'd hang their queen, but let's say knight takes h7, king takes. They don't have to take with the king, but if they did, queen h3 check. Um, I know king g7, we have queen h6 check, but they go king g8. I wonder if bishop f6 there does enough. Because they can't take with the knight because of the pin, and then we'd be threatening queen h8. I feel like there's lots of things that could go wrong there, though. 
like it seems like it might work out in that situation. So knight takes h7 should be considered a little more, especially if we don't find anything better. So it might come down to between between knight takes d5 and knight takes h7. Because queen h3 immediately didn't seem to help much. But that could still be something. But knight takes h7 is more forcing. And... Yeah, so what else did I not look at yet? So bishop takes d5. Let's say pawn takes... This knight takes d5 is probably better than bishop takes d5. Like, I don't see any logical follow-up for... For removing that knight and doing something else. Um, and c4, they could take opposite, and then we're in the same situation, and there's no reason to remove that b pawn or anything. Rook d1 is also kind of a threat, but still rook on the same. Same um, file as the queen, but stuff it, it feels too slow to me, so it's not something I'll consider further than that. And so really, if I had to pick three moves, well no, not three, because I haven't looked at any of the knight discoveries really. Just knight takes d5 and, okay, knight takes d5 and knight h7. Both moves that I'm leaning towards, they are making use of this discovery so the answer is probably going to be something with the knight or i mean h3 so let's see knight e8 we can probably discard knight g8 we can discard knight h5 doesn't really do anything knight g4 doesn't do anything knight e4 doesn't do anything so I think I've narrowed it down to three moves, which are knight takes d5, or knight takes h7, or queen h3. Which is a problem because I feel like knight takes d5, unless there's something that helps us win more material. So knight takes d5, um, pawn takes d5. We do have bishop f6 check. Um, I don't know if that helps do anything. Okay, so knight takes d5, pawn takes bishop e7, queen e7. Oh, well, maybe knight takes d5, pawn takes d5. When I was looking at bishop takes e7, queen takes, the problem was um, the king is on e8, I mean h8, and we can do something like bishop takes d5, but it doesn't hit with check. So maybe the bishop f6 move intermediate before taking on e7 puts the king on g8, and then when we take bishop takes d5, it's with check. And if the queen is not on the a rank anymore, then if the bishop trades, queen would take with check, and then the a8 rook would be hanging. And if they don't go for the trade on d5, then maybe we can do bishop b7 and while it's defended by the queen it's also their queen on e7 it would also be reinforced by our queen on f3 so we would win material that way um so it makes me feel much better about knight takes d5 so let me just calculate to see if that actually works so it's just some kind of random ideas from from calculating these various lines like seeing that the queen would be off this square we can force the king on g8 and we can do these checks so let's see if that idea works. So knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, 
Bishop f6 check to get the king on a light square. He has to go, um, well, okay, they could go rook g7, but then that would hang the queen. So after bishop f6 check, there's king g8. Then um, bishop takes d5. Wait, no, 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 no. Knight takes d5, pawn takes. Bishop f6 check, king g8. Bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, bishop takes d5 with check, bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, check, queen f7, and queen takes a8, and we're winning material then. So we're 10 minutes are up, so we're gonna we're gonna go with that. We could look at the knight h7 move a little bit more, but I was thinking that it wasn't... There was so much that could go wrong with that anyway. And so, and, um... But if I, if I really was trying to do super good calculation training, I might look at that and see exactly what's wrong with it. But I'm gonna go with knight takes d5 since... Um, part of it is to try to speed up my calculation as well, so... I'm pretty happy with what I found so far, and it'll be instructive if I get it wrong. But I think the hard part, if I'm right, is that people might go for the rook immediately instead of seeing the subtlety with bishop f6 check. So we'll see. And also one thing, sometimes when they recommend doing calculation training and you try to see the first move before, see all the moves before making the first move, at that point they recommend sometimes just going through the solution quickly like so at this point i would just play the moves almost blitzing them out but sometimes i you'll you'll get thrown like a surprise move that you didn't consider and then you want to spend more time but that's also an indicator that you didn't see that in your initial assessment of, this, of the position so there's lots of different ways you can work on calculation training we're going to do this knight takes d5 move and see what happens okay so now here, one more time, um, got bishop takes e7, which I don't think works after queen takes. There's not much of a follow-up, but with bishop f6 check, king g8, then taking, the queen is off the defense of this a8 rook. Then we have bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes with check, king moves, or queen defends, and then we take the a8 rook. Okay, so that in, that indicates that, that that was right, so let's not forget the move order and go along. So we take the rook, get the queen off the square, now we do this bishop takes, and now this is a situation where we could just take the bishop and it's reinforced by our, by our bishop on, I mean queen on f3. Alright, and we got it right. So... I haven't done this one before, that was the first attempt. 24 mistakes. And let's move this down a little bit. So the number one mistake was knight takes h7. Which if you will remember, that was my next choice. Um, but I decided I wasn't going to calculate it as much because I felt like it would fail somewhere. Um, bishop takes d5 immediately. Yeah, between bishop takes d5 and knight takes d5, it seemed like knight takes d5 had more threats in addition to it, so, um, so that's kind of how I got rid of bishop takes d5. Queen h3, that was another top move that was, that I was considering. And rook d1, so actually a lot of like these forced, and c4. Yeah, so, um, see like a move like rook b1 I didn't mention. And then cross my mind, it looks way too passive, but... Okay, but this wasn't even the, the hard part, so only 35 people picked knight takes h7. But if you look at move 2, most people did bishop takes e7, which I indicated too. Once I thought bishop f6 worked, I did um, predict that the hard part of this problem would be most people going for the rook immediately. And, that was, and this was a mistake that could be avoided if you count up the material beforehand and um, in the blitz mode is probably much 
it's more difficult to to do that's why the blitz rating is higher than the standard although i don't know much about the correlation of blitz and standard ratings on the site but this would be a much harder problem in blitz mode because you would have to because it looks like you're just winning an exchange when in reality you're down material so so yeah that was that was the hard part is seeing that you do this move to get them on this diagonal and then you have these checks um not like that and not especially not queen h5 but you get you take at this point to get the queen off so it's like removing the defender in a way and then you do like that so they could go here you take the rook they move the king anywhere you take the rook um so let's i'll take a quick look at what's wrong with knight h7 with an engine though so how do i do that We need eight. Okay, it's really just um because we were down material, it's kind of a similar thing with some of the other moves where you're not really gaining much from it. And like they don't have to take um and even when they take the position is even. So see so yeah, I was looking at stuff like this and seeing that it didn't really lead too much. It looks like an attractive idea to keep considering because if they go king g7 you do have this check but um but you also have to see that they have this move and there's not really much there is this pin on the knight but but yeah especially when unless you see something super concrete you shouldn't go for it unless you really ruled out all the other options so Anyway, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.